Primary school is where I first learned of the doctrine of separation of powers. We were taught that the Zambian government is divided into three separate and supposed to be independent arms. The legislature, which is made up of the parliament, headed by the speaker, has the role of passing laws and supervising their implementation. Then there's the executive, headed by the president. Its role is to implement the laws framed by the legislature and the policies of the government. The president also has the power of assent, meaning that before any bill passed by parliament can become law, the president must approve it. The third arm is the judiciary. Its role is to interpret and apply the laws that have been passed by parliament and assented to by the executive. The judiciary is also the custodian of the constitution. All the three arms draw their authority from the constitution, the supreme law of the land. The purpose of separation of powers, I was told, is to provide checks and balances, which is a key principle of democratic governance, and to avoid the over-concentration of unchecked power in any one arm, which could lead to autocracy. So when it comes to the Constitutional Amendment Bill Number 10, there is growing debate as to whether it is proper for the Speaker of the House to insist that the process will continue in spite of the court petition by the Law Association of Zambia. The Speaker appears to have relied on Article 77 of the Constitution, which says that the National Assembly shall regulate its own procedure and make standing orders for the conduct of its business. And in his response to the lawyers representing the Law Association of Zambia, he referred to a doctrine called the Exclusive Cognizance, which holds that Parliament proceedings must be immune from interference by the executive, the courts, or anyone else who may wish to impede or influence these proceedings in pursuit of their own ends. Now, it is important here to separate a few issues. Number one, Article 61 tells us that Parliament's legislative authority derives from us, the people, and that it must be exercised in a manner that protects the constitution. And since the constitution allows parliament to regulate its own procedure, the speaker would have the final say on most matters that become before the house. I say most matters because the constitution has not given the speaker blanket powers over everything. For certain matters, their processes are clearly laid out within the constitution itself. The house may only follow. It cannot impose its own rules. The process for amending the constitution is not an ordinary process. It is spelled out within the constitution. And parliament does not enjoy unfettered jurisdiction over the constitution. Since the matter here relates to the application of the constitutional provision, Article 79 in particular, one could ask the constitutional court to scrutinize the legality of the process in line with Article 128, which tells us that it is actually the constitutional court that has the original and final jurisdiction to hear any matter that relates to the constitution. Where is the harm in allowing the constitutional court, the custodian of the constitution, to offer its opinion on whether or not this matter is before the house constitutionally. In my view, the proper thing for the speaker to do is give me a handy break. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.